What's up, Skywatchers? What is up indeed? All right, the polar vortex has split in two. Today, we're going to take a look at a working model of ISCAT, scatter array radar, and ionospheric heaters in Norway. We're also going to take a look at chemtrails and NEXRAD working together to steer storms. And we're also going to take a look at atmospheric lenses and sunshades. Right now, we're taking a look at Alaska on radar. See those beams? Look closely. That is NEXRAD working together with chemtrails to steer this storm. At this moment, there are currently more than 760 geoengineering projects taking place, and I'd be willing to bet that there are plenty more we do not know about. NEXRADs do need more attention from our community. They are just as dangerous as HARP, and they are used daily to maneuver, to manipulate storms, chemtrails, rain, whether they're pushing it out or bringing it straight to you. NEXRADs are doing their part in the geoengineering world. All right, now as for those big round clouds in the sky, I often get asked, is that a planetary system? Is that Nibiru? No, it is not. These are tools for geoengineering and weather warfare. I think many have fallen victim to the Nibiru community covering up geoengineering and weather warfare either out of ignorance or they're just being malicious, but we're going to solve this today. As to the formation of these big round clouds, sounding rockets are going up everywhere, every day. They're releasing chemicals and heavy metals. Chemtrail planes are high in the stratosphere, deploying their chemicals. Ionospheric heaters and scatter array radars are turned on to heat this plasma and polish it to a fine finish to create, excuse me, a space mirror or an atmospheric lens. And so when we look at the sun and we see these big, beautiful halos and it looks like something is in front of the sun, there is indeed something in front of the sun. It is an atmospheric lens. It scatters the light up and across the atmosphere, creating a blinding white light. In order for this to work properly, they create three, four, or five of these big round clouds, atmospheric lens, space mirrors, and this serves as a tool for them to use their equipment. Now, some of this, these tools are for communication, while others, I believe, are for weather warfare and controlling systems. So as we watch all these sun dogs and sun halos, I see many calling them ice crystals. I think that is far from the truth. This is a chemical shitstorm, and they form an atmospheric lens, and we experience it as sun dogs are a solar halo. If you're asking me, a meteorologist is the enemy of our community, so sharing a meteorologist's work does nothing to enlighten anybody. In conclusion to this part of the video, I would say these are not planetary bodies. This is not the return of Nibiru, but this is weather warfare and geoengineering. I will leave some links in the descriptions to some papers. So let's take a look at events from this past week, the first week of January, starting with ionospheric heaters on full blast. This past week, we had an X5 solar flare that makes me think a little bit about space probes, space radiation, remediation satellites, basically ionospheric heaters over our heads. I think that's some very important information to think about. Two days later, the polar vortex splits in two. After that, Japan is rocked by a 7.6 earthquake. All right, I'd like to thank climateviewer.org for their maps and information. If you haven't seen them yet, go check out Jim Lee at Climate Viewer. 
All right, so this polar vortex has made it extremely windy here in Alaska. 50 mile an hour winds, sub-zero temperatures. But I went out anyway to get some video and some photographs so I could share them with you. So I hope you watched to the end. And until next time, stay aware, be prepared, keep looking up.